Hi there, my name is Eric Hart. Welcome to my home in Second Life, the persistent three-dimensional virtual community. My house is very simple. Digital real estate is very expensive, so I try to impose as little as possible on the friend who lets me crash here for free. Just so you're aware, everything that you see in Second Life is 100% user-built. Someone who uses the service took the time and the effort to create every piece of geometry, every, every graphic, every motion, every script, every animation. So you might be wondering what possible relation could exist between Second Life and Serious Academia. Um, quite possibly what you have heard about Second Life has been in a recreational context or has been either salacious or sensational. Uh, that salacious and sensational part is probably quite true. There are, however, a number of applications for the technologies that Second Life and other virtual presence platforms are built on. And that's what we're going to talk about for just a few moments. But first, let's have a look at something a little more scenic. Serious gaming sounds like an oxymoron. But isn't play the mechanism used by children to learn how the great big world around them works? It would seem intuitive to extend that play as learning experience to our developing digital toys. Following that intuition, software developers and educators have begun to scratch the surface of what works and what does not in the serious gaming realm. Like all new communities of science, there is an amazing amount of activity between academics and practitioners who never imagined an intersection of their interests. For instance, here at the University of South Florida's Medical Center and their education island in here in Second Life. Serious gaming is not without its issues. High development costs, especially as the quality of commercial games has risen. A technology gap. Not all learners have access to the appropriate hardware or the bandwidth that's needed to really run things appropriately. There's a steep instructor learning curve to use the software and to facilitate lessons. One size does not fit all. It has become very clear that there is no single size magic wand to fix the educational needs through serious gaming. This, of course, comes out of the mixed results in efficacy. Research tends to show that math and science are particularly difficult skills to teach through the virtual or through serious gaming efforts. Soft skills, however, that training seems to have done very well. Welcome to Governor Linden's mansion. This uh, home was originally owned by the founder of Second Life. His uh, avatar's name was Governor Linden. His actual name is Philip Rosedale. He's the guy who actually invented... Um... You may recall that uh, I spoke of Second Life as a platform. There's a reason I use that term platform instead of game. You see, a game has rules with prescribed and proscribed behaviors. Uh, these behaviors tend to build towards the accomplishment of some greater goal. Scoring a goal, adding points, killing enough zombies. Second Life itself has no goal. There is no triumphant end state. Um, Second Life is built on a freely available Open Simulator software. OpenSimulator.org is an organization of uh, independent software developers who work together to a common standard to create the, a similar experience that's available across a number of different platforms, whether you're using Windows, Mac, or Linux, you'll still have the same Second Life experience, or excuse me, the same open simulator experience. Linden Labs is Second Life's parent company. Now they have taken that original base of computer code, they've improved on it, and they built an array of services around it to help users both new and old as they navigate and create their virtual experience. Linden Labs generates revenue by renting server space and offering premium services um, but it is important to note that Second Life is free to access for anyone, anywhere, as long as you have 
the minimum system requirements and the appropriate internet bandwidth, then you too can take part. Now games can be built in Second Life using the built-in programming language and the physics engine that's built in. And you can create almost any world that you can imagine. You are really only limited by your coding skill and the limitations of the software itself. I really want to emphasize though that Second Life and other open simulator worlds are not games in and of themselves. As Second Life has matured, there have been speed bumps. In an effort to uh, continue to push the state of the art in dynamically rendered content, the minimum system requirements for, to use the software have been out of reach of a lot of the potential user base. The in-world navigation and the user interface do have a fair learning curve. It's not an easy thing to learn how to navigate, and it does take a small time commitment to master. And horror of horrors, there's actually sex in Second Life. So, to address the first two big issues. One, the average commercially available laptop is now capable of effectively rendering Second Life. Number two, every software application has a learning curve. The Second Life viewer is no more complicated now than Microsoft Word was just a few years ago. Now about the sex. Open simulator based platforms use the plain old internet to transmit and render data. Unlike other browsers which use a page metaphor to display this information, open simulator worlds use a real-world experiential metaphor. Just like the old-school internet, persons with active hormonal drives will find a way to involve sex. A user's exposure to graphic images can be virtually eliminated by making use of the in-world rating system. Here you see that the region that we are in right now is rated moderate. And they can also make sure that they stay within those areas that are rated G. More than just sex and violence does happen in Second Life. A lot of people are surprised to discover that there are churches and other spiritual organizations which hold virtual meetings and services within the virtual world of Second Life. Whatever issues do exist can be worth it to experience the beauty meet the people and maybe even grow your mind. Look Ma, I made it to Stanford! <laughs> but seriously, just like the old school internet, the thrill seekers have faded away and major respected institutions are increasing their presence in the medium, in the virtual medium. Schools like, clearly, Stanford, the University of Worcester, Rockcliffe University, and the Indiana University system are experimenting with ways of displaying information and with new ways of extending their classrooms and campuses. These schools are leveraging the shared presence of the virtual world to teach language, clinical practice, sales, debate, and a wide variety of other soft subjects to learners spread across the globe, saving time, cost, and environmental degradation. I want to thank you for taking this virtual stroll with me. 
I do hope that you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing, and that you're intrigued enough to at least look into Second Life and Open Simulator Technologies for education. Thanks a lot again. Goodbye.